Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about a vulnerability that I found in a GitHub app. Um, now, unfortunately, the uh, maintainer, well, the, I talked with the maintainer and they said it was fine that I disclose how I found this and the details of it. Um, and unfortunately, the maintainer has decided to discontinue their service. But I will show you what it did, how it worked, and uh, how I found this particular vulnerability. But anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so the app that we're talking about today, oh, I typed it in the title slide. It's Fussy Space Fox. Anyway, the, um, the GitHub app is called Fussy Fox. The idea behind it is it is a linting service for GitHub. You basically hook it up to your GitHub repository and it will tell you the results from a few popular open source linters. Um, now I've, I've actually written something very similar to this um, that uh, I'll show you why it doesn't have the same problems, um, but I've written a thing called Precommit CI, which is based on Precommit and also provides similar linting and code formatting. Um, but let's talk about how Fussy Fox works. Uh, they talk about it a little bit here. Uh, it is a Lambda-based linter, which responds to events from GitHub. Uh, actually, we'll draw, we'll draw a diagram. Why not? So you can kind of imagine um, a boundary between the outside world, outside world and an AWS account. And you can imagine GitHub being here, GitHub. And there are two components to this. One is a Lambda, which I'm going to somewhat incorrectly, uh, actually there's, there's two Lambdas involved here. So we will draw both of those Lambdas. The first is a, a webhook. Um, so this is using API gateway. Um, Precommit CI also has an API gateway based webhook. And so this is just an easy way to receive requests from the public internet and so GitHub's um, webhooks call into call into this. So that's how this becomes, you know, gets its entry point. Then what this webhook does is it sends, uh, they, they used SNS as their intermediate here, um, a notification of, it's not exactly a queuing system, but you can think of it kind of as a queuing system. And so their webhook puts things onto this pub sub SNS and they have subscribers to this, which are another Lambda, which actually runs the real code here. Um, linter Lambda. Oops. And then this linter Lambda runs the actual linter. So it, it pulls, it gets notified from this pub sub here. Oh, that was a curvy line. Didn't mean it to be a curvy line. Oh, well. Uh, this linter Lambda is notified from the pub sub and then eventually writes back to GitHub statuses. Oh. That curvy line curved in the wrong direction. So this is, uh, you know, kind of kind of a loop situation here. But this is writing GitHub statuses. And in a lot of ways, Precommit CI is designed very similarly. It has the same sort of flow. However, you know, it uses a queue instead, and it uses EC2 and some other parts in between. Uh, but the basic part about this is like a pull request triggers a webhook, a webhook puts something onto an SNS pub sub thing, <laughs> and then a Lambda is triggered as a result of that. It runs the lints and then it sends its statuses back to GitHub. So that's kind of, kind of the loop in how this executes. Now, one of the linters that this Fussy Fox service supported is a linter that I maintain called Flake8. And there's a particular, I mean, the, the way Flake 8 works and the, the reason that Flake 8 is relatively popular is it is a plugin system. So if we you know, set up a virtual environment and we pip install Flake 8, um, Flake 8 comes with a couple plugins out of the box, PyCode style, PyFlakes, and McCabe. This one is disabled by default, but you can install any sort of other plugin. So let's say you wanted to install, pip install Flake 8 typing imports. Well, actually, let's, let's do without that first. So let's say, um, oh, this is left over from the other video. From typing import no return and def main. Just to show you an example of um, a plugin um, happening here. So normally if we run Flake 8 on this Python file, you'll see that it produced no errors. Uh, if I install this special plugin, Flake 8 typing imports, and we run Flake 8 on that, You'll see that um, 
this plugin has added a new uh, error code here, this TYP001 that says, you know, I have to make some change. And so that's kind of the, the core feature of Flake 8 is that you can add plugins to it and they can add functionality to Flake 8. Now, of course, FussyFox doesn't enable you to install plugins, so that's not the vulnerability here. Because uh, in theory, if you could install plugins, you could install whatever arbitrary code and run any malicious plugin to find any of the secrets that are exposed to this linter lambda here. And it necessarily has secrets exposed to it because it has to write GitHub statuses back. Now, of course, pre-commit CI doesn't expose the secrets to this and has a different uh, you know, chain of execution that isolates the secrets from the actual arbitrary code execution. So that isn't a vulnerability there. But in this case, they're exposed directly to this lambda. And as long as we can get arbitrary code execution, we can affect that lambda. And Flagate has a feature that unfortunately gives you access to arbitrary code execution, and that is local plugins. And what local plugins are meant to be is they're a way to have one-off uh, one off Flake 8 plugins that are just for your particular code base. So you might have you know, a specific lint that only applies to my private code base and it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't warrant making a full plugin. So you can use a one off plugin to do that. Um, and the way you do that is you set up those Flake 8 local plugins and you can have both extensions and reporters. I don't know why anyone would make a local reporter, but it is certainly possible. Um, and so let's let's do that in our case here, setup.cfg. I'm going to make a plugin.py. And you can imagine the, the reason this is vulnerable is anyone could make this plugin.py and set the setup.cfg in this particular way and then you know run their arbitrary code on that remote system. So let's say uh, raise system exit. This is going to be our, our payload. You could, of course, imagine dumping the environment or making an HTTP request or doing all sorts of nefarious stuff inside this plugin. Uh, if we do flake a local plugins and extension equals, and it doesn't matter what we call it, uh, we just want it to trigger an import of this model. I believe you also need to add it to the path. Yeah, paths equals dot. Let's actually comment this out because I'm not 100% certain about that. And now if we run Flake 8, okay, so it didn't load the plugin there, so we do need those paths here. And you'll see now that because we've added this local plugin, even though we haven't installed anything, we can now run arbitrary code inside the Flake 8 process. And so we can access this. And in, in this case here, since we can run arbitrary code in, oh, that's text, I don't want text. Oh, I did want that text. <laughs> Dang it. All right, well, whatever. You can pretend that it still says post GitHub status is there. Uh, but since we have, you know, kind of breached this Lambda here, we now have access to any credentials that are available here. And so we have access to the application's credentials to do whatever it could do on, on GitHub. And I think at the very least it needed access to all of the source code. It may have had right access to the source code. Um, may not, I don't know, I didn't confirm that. Um, but it can write any status. I think it also had comments as a feature. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff that it could do that was not so great. Also, since it's running in the AWS account, it would also have access to any AWS resources that this Lambda would have access to as well. So that was that was kind of the impact of this. Uh, as far as I can tell, no one actually exploited this. So uh, it wasn't, you know, it was never run in the wild. I even didn't run this in the wild. I found this by analyzing the source code of Fussy Fox. Um, and that brings us to our last point, which is why this is relevant to, you know, why am I telling you this thing about a service that's no longer there? Uh, and the reason I'm telling you this is this is still relevant for other things such as GitHub Actions. Um, and I did a video about pull request target, and I will link that in the description, but I have actually found um, people using Flake 8 on GitHub, which they expose sensitive credentials to a Flake 8 process and an attacker could do the exact same thing as I've done here, where they've you know, set up a local plugin that imports a local Python file that's checked into the pull request and then access any secrets that are available there. So it would be, you know, it's still relevant for somebody that, that may be thinking of running Flake 8 in a sensitive context. 
But anyway, hopefully this is interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.